So now I'm on row 9. I'm going to go ahead and get you started with row 9. So for row 9, we're going to start with the blue color to correspond with the graph, and I have one loop on there for the blue. Now we need two purple, so I'm going to go into the next stitch, just give a gentle tug with the purple, bring up a loop with the purple, and I'm just going to go ahead and bring up the number of colors that I need for this row. So go ahead, finish this row, and if I come up to anything that looks challenging, I'll come back and show you what to do. Now I'm on row 9, and I just finished my loop of black, and I just want to point out something on this row. Look how the blue stitch is angled. When it's angled like that, sometimes it's easy to miss that stitch, so make sure, go ahead and double check your blocks, make sure that your, cor your colors are corresponding with the blocks on the graph, and also make sure that you're lining up on the right colors from the previous row before you continue on. And here's another example. You can see how the blue stitch is almost hidden. So again, make sure that you're going under the right stitch. So this is how mine looks. Everything's lining up exactly like it's supposed to. And you want to make sure of this and double check before you continue on, especially if you're a beginner, so you don't have to go back and frog your work. So for beginners, go ahead and count your loops. I'm going to go ahead and count back and show you my color changes also. So this will be my last time doing this because I've done it for all the previous rows. You should know how to do it by now. So now I'm going to go ahead and again I have my arm, my right hand on the end of the Tunisian crochet hook. And again, I'm not applying a lot of pressure. So remember, you don't want to grip it really tight. You just want to loosely hold it so you don't hurt your right hand. So then you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through one. Remember we always go through one loop first, then yarn over and then go through two loops at a time. And remember, you color change when you have one, two different colors on the end. And you always change colors to the second loop on the end. So now I'm on blue. And then you just release your yarn as needed. I'm going to go ahead and release my blue. So at first, it may be a little bit difficult. Oh, I forgot I'm supposed to be counting. But once you get used to it, uh, it becomes very easy. And then it becomes so easy that you become complacent, and then that's when the errors occur. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11 and I always give a gentle tug before I go 12 13 14 15 16, 17, 25, 26, 
27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. And then another question was if I go behind or on top, and I usually go on top, so I just lay the coral down, pick up the purple, and that's if I'm coming from back behind where I started, and just go on top of the coral like that. And then the last stitch will be 40. And then you just completed row 9. So now I'm going to get you started on row 10. So now we're moving up to row 10. And for row 10 you're starting with blue again. So I'm going to leave my blue loop on my hook. Then I need two purple. So I'm going to go into Drop the blue, pick up the purple, go under the purple stitch, and bring up a purple. And then go into the next stitch and bring up another purple. Then I need two blue, and I'm just going to stretch my blue, give a gentle tug on the coral. The blue is really close, I'm going to pick up the blue from here, and then bring up two blue and then I need a purple so I'm going to go into this next stitch and then the purple is close so I'm going to go ahead and bring up a purple stitch so now I don't need any more of the cor coral so I'm going to go ahead and turn the work down give a gentle tug on the coral, leave a little bit of a loose yarn end, and then I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot with the coral. Then I can go ahead and move the coral out of the way now. So I just use the end of the clothespin to kind of grip the coral, and then I can move it away until I need it. So now you can just continue this row. I need two green, so I'm going to drop the purple, give a gentle tug on the green, and then bring up a loop with the green. So go ahead, finish bringing up the different color loops that you need and follow the graph, and then come back when you reach the end of row 10. If I run into anything that I need to tell you, then I'll come back on video. So now, this is how my work looks so far. I'm corresponding with the graph exactly. Now I need to bring in some yellow for the crab's leg. So I already have some yellow on one of my clothespins. So this is one of the clothespins that I set aside. So now I need the yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the yellow with the yarn that I had on my clothespin. So I already have the blue. I'm going to go into the next stitch, bring up the yellow, and then tie a knot. Then I just need one more of the yellow. And then the rest is going to be blue and then brown for the rest of the row. So now we did half of row 10. We're going to finish row 10. You should have 40 loops on your Tunisian crochet hook. I'm going to go ahead and let you count the loops now, or you can count on the way back as you make your color change. And when you reach finish row 10, come back and then I'll help you start row 11. So now I finished row 10 and I'm ready to start row 11. And row 11 has two blue stitches. 
So I have one blue already on my, my hook. I'm going to go into the next stitch and bring up another loop with the blue. So I have two. Then I need one purple. So go ahead, finish bringing up all the colors that you need for row 11, half of row 11, and then come back. So this is how my work looks so far, and I need to bring in my black colored yarn, so I'm going to go ahead and place some of my black now onto a clothespin. So now I have my black colored yarn on a clothespin, and then that frees up my black colored yarn on this skein. So I'm just going to leave it attached to this skein also, and then now I need Let's see where I left off. So I'm on 11, I have two green, now I need a black, and then three red. So I'm gonna go into the next stitch, bring up my black colored yarn, and then tie a knot. Then I need three of the red colored. So I'm going to go into the next stitch. Now the next stitch is purple, so I'm going to make sure that there's no gap with the purple. Go into the purple stitch, drop the purple, and then pick up my red. So my red is over here. I'm going to give it a gentle tug, and then bring it across. And usually I'll bring it across on top of the other colors if, they're, if they have other colors there. So I'm going to bring that up for one. two, three. So I have the black, the three red, now I need three purple. So I feel like I'm painting with the yarn. It's really a lot of fun. It, at first it may take a little bit to get used to, but once you get used to it, I hope that you love doing it as much as I do. I just really love Tunisian crochet for these colorful afghans. So I finished three, finished three of the purple, now I need one red. Go ahead, finish bringing up all the colors that you need to finish half of row 11. So this may be a little tricky area for beginners, so make sure that your colors are lining up where they're supposed to, like the black over the blue, the two green over the two green, the blue over the blue, and the two yellow over the two yellow. So now I've finished half of row 11. I'm ready to count my way back to the beginning. Make sure I have a count of 40. So now I still have a 40 count, and I'm ready to start row 12. But before I start row 12, I just want to show you one thing. So down here, I have the yellow from the other crab foot. So I'm just going to give it a gentle tug and just double check it on the front, it looks good right here. So we don't need this yellow down here anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and trim it, leave a loose yarn end, and then I'm going to go ahead and tie it next to this red loose yarn end here. And then that frees up that yellow in case I need it again somewhere else. So I'm just going to set this aside. Now I also have a blue yarn down here that I'm going to free up and get that out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot. And now I have a blue yarn. Let's see if I have find which one I cut. Here it is. So I'm going to go ahead and free up this blue yarn. So now I have all of my yarns on the clothespin organized before I start the next row. So now I'm going to work row 12 with you. So for row 12, I need two of the blue colored yarn. So I have one 
on the hook already. So I'm going to go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. So now I have two of the blue. I need one of the purple. So drop the blue, pick up the purple. Now I need one blue. Need one purple. Just undoing my purple color. Now I need two green. And again, you see the slant here of the stitch because I gave it a gentle tug. So I'm going to go into there. Now I have my two green. Now I need three yellow. So this is where I don't have any yellow close by. So I'm going to go ahead and get my yellow color that I had on the clothespin already. I'm going to go ahead and bring up a loop with my yellow color and then go ahead and tie a knot with the green. Then I'm going to give a gentle tug with the blue. Make sure there's no gaps there. Go into the blue stitch. Drop the blue yarn, pick up my yellow, bring up a yellow, and I need one more yellow. So now I have three yellow. Then I need two green. Drop the yellow, make sure that the greens, there's no gap. Bring up a green. Go into the next stitch, bring up another green, and then I need the black over the previous row's black. So I'm going to pick up the black colored yarn, give a gentle tug, go under the black loop, bring up a loop so that the black stitch is directly over the black stitch from the previous row. Then I need three, let's see, double check my graph on 12, three red. Drop the black, pick up the red, give it a gentle tug, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop. Now I have three of the red. Now I need two purple. There's one. Two. Then I need two red. Now I can use the red here or the other red. It doesn't matter. I'm just loosening up my purple a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and just use the closest red. And I'm going to release my red. There's one red. Let me double check the graph. And I can see that I made an error with the red here, so I'm going to go ahead and back up. And I'm actually in the purple stitch, so I'm going to bring up a loop in that one. So you can see, according to the graph, I'm on 12. The red should be on top of the previous row's purple. 
So I have my two purple and now I, have a, I need two reds. So I have one red. Now I can go into the next stitch and bring up a loop and I have two reds. So now I did it correctly. Now I need three purple. So my purple is over here. And again, I pull it on top of the pre previous color. And this is where you don't want to miss the stitch again. So sometimes you can see how the stitches almost meld together. Sorry about that. So here you can see they're almost melded together. And I know that I have three purple here on the previous row. So I need to get under the right stitch. So I'm going to get under the right stitch bring up a loop and that corrects that stitch back to where it should be. So as long as you follow the graph and you make the number of colors that you need you'll see how the stitches will all line up from the previous row. So now I have three purple, I need four red. So I have the red right there I'm going to go ahead and pick up for one, two, three, four. So you can see that this style of thread leaves a large gap, so I'm going to pull that gap back together nicely. Then I'm going to look at my chart and double check if I need a black there. So yes, I need a black stitch, so I'm going to go ahead, go under the previous rose black stitch, bring up a loop with the black colored yarn. Then I need a green, so drop the black, gently pull on the green to bring the stitch over, bring up a green. Then I need four yellows. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the next stitch, get my yellow, give it a gentle tug and bring it over for one, two, three, and four. And then the rest, you just make the blues and browns and then come back. And that's half of row 12. So now I have half of the row 12 done. I'm going to count and color change back. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. One, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. One, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, 
36, 37, 38, see how I gave a gentle tug there, 39, and 40, which is what we want, that, we, that way we know that we did it correctly. So I just want to give you a quick look at my work and how nice it looks. Look at those beautiful colors in there. And of course it's curling up. Don't worry about that. That's normal with Tunisian crochet with this method that I'm using. And now we're on to row 13. So now I'm going to get you started with row 13. So again, it starts with the blue colored block. So we have one loop of blue on our, cro our crochet hook, Tunisian crochet hook. We need another blue loop. So I'm going to go into the next stitch, bring up another blue. Then I need one purple. Go into the next stitch, give a gentle tug, bring up a purple. So go ahead, finish bringing up the color loops that you need for row 13. Now on row 13, right above the yellow stitch is a blue loop. I wanted to let you know that don't bring over the blue from the end because you have the blue down lower. Remember we had some blue right here. So you have a blue, or you should have a blue yarn that you can just bring up from that bottom row. And then just bring up a loop with that blue. Now here I'm on row 13 and I just came to the black the previous row's black stitch because it needs a green stitch above that one. Now I'm not going to cut this black yarn because if you look at the graph you're going to need some black yarn up here. So I'm going to leave the black yarn attached and when I get to this row, I'll drag the black yarn behind the work and start resuming crochet with that. So for now, I'm just going to leave this black yarn attached until I need it again. And then here, you can see that the next stitch, the next green stitch, goes into a triangle like I told you. So I know that I need to go into that green stitch next, so don't skip the green stitch thinking that you're going to go into the yellow stitch. So I'm going to go into the next stitch, which is the green stitch, and then I need my second green. So you can use the chart to help you so that you don't skip a stitch. So here you can see that the green is over the black and over the green. So make sure that your Tunisian crochet reflects that and then you can see all of the stitches from the previous row. Rows. So now I have all of my loops on the hook and I'm ready to finish row 13. So I'm going to count on my way back. So now you should be getting pretty good Go ahead and finish row 14 up to row 17. I'll work row 17 with you because it looks like we're adding a little smile there. So I'll, I'll do one row with you here. So go ahead, finish rows 14 up to row 17, and then I'll work row 17 with you. So I'm on row 14 and I got to the yellow portion where I needed three blue and I just wanted to go over that you can cut the yellow at this time because you don't need the yellow yarn here unless you want to drag the yellow yarn up to when you need it again but I'm going to go ahead and just cut it here. The other thing that I wanted to point out on row 14 
is you can also stop the purple so you can cut the purple yarn and tie a knot here and also I am going to go ahead and cut my additional red at this point and just use one red and then use this red when I need it. So you can decide how you want to do it, but I'm going to go ahead and cut my purple and cut my additional red on row 14. So I'm still on 14. I just wanted to remind you not to forget your knots and I just wanted to show that some people said that they did, weren't too sure about the knots because they were afraid that they would see them, but I never have my knots show through any of my Tunisian crochet afghans. And as you can see, I don't see any of my knots on this one either. So I'm still on 14, and it looks like I closed off a yellow too. So I, I um, closed off a lot of colors on row 14. So again, I wanted to stress, make sure that you count your loops and your stitches for each row until you meet up with me at row 17 because you should have 40 loops or 40 stitches for each row. On row 16, I needed the black colored yarn again. And just like I said before, I took the black colored yarn from down here and brought it up along the back to bring up a loop where I needed it on row 16. And let me go ahead and just show you what my work looks like so far. It's looking good. And then this is what row 16 looks like. Now I'm going to finish up row 16 with the rest of the blues and the browns. So now this is what my work looks like so far. It's looking good. And again, you're going to have that curl at the bottom, and that's normal. So I just want to give you a close-up look at my work. So it looks good. Then I'm going to work row 17 with you. So I'm going to work row 17 completely with you. And then you should be able to work the rest of the block since we've worked the major portion together. So now you know what to do as far as working this block and the color changes. So I'm going to work 17 with you completely and then I'll let you finish the rest of the blocks for the crab. So for row 17 we're going to start with 11 blue colored loops to correspond with the graph. So I have one already. There's two. Three. Four. Five. Now you may have noticed that I have two blues here. I'm not going to get rid of a blue yet unless I have to. I'm just going to remember that I have two blues that I can, one of them I can take somewhere else if I need to. So I have five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, eleven. So now I need a yellow block right before the previous row's black block. So I know I'm working correctly so far. So now I'm going to bring one of my yellow colors in that I have on my clothespin. And then just bring up the yellow colored yarn and then tie a knot. And 
Then you need the black colored yarn. So I'm going to go into the next stitch, bring up a loop with my black colored yarn. Now sometimes with the black colored yarn the gaps will come apart. One of the things that you can do since I have a loose yarn end over here I can go ahead and tie a knot with that loose yarn end just to kind of stabilize it a little more. Then I have my black loop. Now I need five red. And feel free to ask questions. I may answer the questions in subsequent videos. So here you can see that the red stitch is going close. You don't want to miss it. So there's my second. You can either leave comments on the blog post. You can contact me on Facebook or you can just comment on the YouTube comments. There's four and five. So I have five of the red. Now I have the smile. So I need four black for the smile. Since I have the black yarn close, and I'm going to be using a lot of black yarn in here, I'm going to go ahead and stretch it across. So I'm going to go into the next stitch, and then bring up a loop with my black colored yarn. That was over here. So now I have one. Two. Three, four. Then I'm going to need my red colored yarn. So I'm going to stretch the red colored yarn across. Go into the next stitch. And then bring up the red colored yarn. So I have one, two, three. Four and five. And then I'm going to need a black colored yarn over the previous rows, black colored yarns. I'm going to drop the red, pick up the black that I have here, and then gently pull on it to bring the two stitches close together. Then I'm going to go into the black stitch from the previous row, bring up a loop. Then I need one blue, so I'm going to go ahead and drop the black and then bring the blue stitch closer. Then I'm going to go into the blue stitch from the previous row, bring up a loop. Then I need two green, so I'm going to go over here, drop the blue, go into the first green stitch, bring up a loop. Go into the next green stitch, bring up a loop. Then I just need the blues and the browns for the rest of the row. So now I finished this half of this row, 17. So now I'm going to count and color change back across. And I'm just going to show you how I hold, and I'm also going to show you how I count. So again, you start out by yarning over and going through one loop only. So that's one, two, just going to release a little bit of the blue yarn. Three. And I'm not gripping hard over here, just loose. Four. It's easy to grip too hard, so make sure that you don't grip it too hard over here. So I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine.
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, remember we stretched the black colored yarn, 27, 28, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. So I know that I'm working it correctly and it's looking great. So now, go ahead and finish the crab block, and then we'll be able to start on our next block. I just wanted to let you know that for the white portion on my crab eyes, I'm going to use this gorgeous white glittery yarn, and this yarn is from Red Heart with Love Metallic, and it's just a white colored yarn. So I just wanted to show you that when I'm not using it, I put all of the colors with the clothespins into one of the containers in my storage bin here. And I still have these all attached to the block that I'm working on. Now I cut all of the colors that I'm no longer using from the previous rows, just be careful if you cut the blue here, and this is from row 17. So because I tied it to the green here, that warped the stitch just slightly, but I know that there's a stitch there, so I know to work in that stitch above the green to get the blue. So just keep that in mind if you do that. And then I was able to fit the block that I'm working on with, along with all of the clothespin yarns attached to the block into my second storage bin. And then you could just put your graph anywhere in one of the storage bin compartments on the same storage bin. And then it's just really compact, so it's ready for storage until you're ready to work on that block again.